Here we go. Episode three. Just like the other two. No. Welcome to Exit Stage Left, a show for thespians everywhere to switch off. Down stage left, we have Ed. I am. Please <laughs> <laughs> screwed that up. Moving on. Down stage right. No, I'm not sorry. Right. <laughs> no, you're over. Right. Right. It's gone. I had a line, people. <laughs> I had a line. <laughs> prompt. <laughs> In the prompt desk, we have Carly. And up stage right, we have Phoebe. Hello. The show is quite simple. Let's get on with it. Well, did you not introduce? Zoe? Yes, I did. I did, I, I did it while you were on the floor. You were moaning over me. I'm so Hi, I'm sorry. Zoe. Hang on, moaning over you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> right, so now, us three of us just disappear, so Zoe and Edge can kind of have the stage alone. <laughs> Welcome to Exit Stage Left After Dark. <laughs> the post-watershed version. My fit bitch yelling at me now. <laughs> Let's get on with the first question for this oh, test. No. <laughs> Which song was not included in the original version of Me and My Girl? Me and My Son. <laughs> <laughs> me and My Dog. <laughs> me and My Cat. <laughs> and Goldfish. <laughs> me and My Goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> me and My Goldfish. <laughs> yes, lady behind the camera in the audience. Lambeth Walk. No. Oh, shit. Minus one to the audience. <laughs> Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> my girl, my girl. Talking about my, my girl. girl. My what girl. is happening? Has <laughs> someone included in it? Yeah, like, true. This true. feels like a fever dream. You. Like, genuinely. Yeah. <laughs> you pinch me, I'll pinch you. Are we awake? <laughs> I hope not. I think the audience have got that. Go on. The sun has got his hat off. Nope. <laughs> oh. Minus two to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is racking up the, the negatives here. <laughs> Thank you. Leaning on a lamppost. Oh, I love that song. Wasn't in the original. Yeah. Which famous actor played Shylock in the 2004 film adaptation of The Merchant of Venice? Daniel Radcliffe. In 2004, <laughs> he was 13 or something. You know, I just realised you two are older than the you two are younger than the first two Harry Potter films. Oh God! Because yeah, first all really old. Because <laughs> Chamber of Secrets came out six weeks after I was born. Oh. They're younger God. than the first two Lord of the Rings films. I haven't seen any of the Lord of the Rings. Films. What? <laughs> Why did I hire these people? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that bit. <laughs> you sent an email. We said yes. <laughs> it captured us and enslaved us and brought us yes. back. Like twice. Can help. help. <laughs> I just thought you dragged them in off the streets to be. Honest. <laughs> that would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> So, they which film was that to play Charlotte in 2004 film? Did they, did they cast, like, a genuine Jewish man? I don't know if this man is Jewish. <laughs> yeah, but Charlotte's a Jew. I know he I know the character is. I don't yeah. know if the actor is. Chamin Topple. <laughs> if there's a comment, tell me if this actor is Jewish. You don't know who he is yet. Okay. Helen Mirren. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the actor Daniel Craig. Ian no. McCullum? No. Carly, your, your bet? My bet. I'm just really random here, isn't it? Even that Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> Is it George Simon Cowell playing <laughs> Shylock? Wow. I can see, in a weird way, I can see that. <laughs> mm, it's Al Pacino. Al, Al Pacino. Oh, Pacino. Oh, Who? Oh, what, what, Al Pacino. What, what, no, sorry. You don't know who Al Pacino is. Really? No. What? Oh, wow. Children. <laughs> I'm older than you. Children. I am, I am Your mental age is younger, children. <laughs> Never work with children or animals. I think I'm working with both. <laughs> <laughs> In 1613, what happened to the Globe Theatre during a performance of Shakespeare's it's Henry VIII? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it does help I finish the question first, but yes, it burnt down. Yes. Yes. yes, they set off a theatrical cannon. It caught the thatching. No one was hurt except one man's britches were set on fire. <laughs> that wasn't embarrassing. It was embarrassing, but they were probably put out with a bottle of ale, apparently. <laughs> Which play had a special adaptation presented at the BBC Proms in 2014? A BBC what? Proms. proms. The BBC What's Proms. The What's that? No. You don't, you've never heard of BBC Proms? No. Really? <coughs> yeah. Ed! Ed! How have you heard of the Proms? What's You yeah. Philistine! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Exit stage left. <laughs> <laughs> what is the BBC prom? It's, it's, it's a classical oh. musical 
Yes, they consider you friends with me. How could you not know what the problem is? So it's classical music. It's got to be as in P R O M or P R O N G. M prongs. The BBC prongs. That's a cooking show, isn't it? Brian, raise your children correctly. How does he not know what the proms are? Even I know what they are. Last night, the proms. <laughs> you know, that jingoistic sort of... I genuinely have no <laughs> Sorry, idea what the I, fuck we're talking about. I want to see last night at the prongs, but they're sort of bashing frying <laughs> pans at random. Yeah. It sounds a bit like that. <laughs> Sometimes. You can play now. the sea shanty on another. <laughs> So, the, the, BBC B Prom. BBC Proms in 2014. BBC has a big, big black cock. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the big black cock symphony orchestra. <laughs> Well, now we know what your son your son's been watching on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Big black cock prongs, apparently. No, he went incognito. <laughs> Don't forget to send me the link, will you? <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah. Did you see proms? As in the British Broadcasting Corporation, in 2014, they put on a musical, well, not a musical, but a special adaptation of this play. What was it, for fuck's sake? Hudsucker Proxy. Don't? Hudsucker oh. Proxy. No. No. Uh, Any more offers? The year does give a big hint. What was the year again? 2014. Where the bees fly. <laughs> Catch it when it comes out next year. No, but you're getting close. Oh. You're, you're on the right lines with the war theme. A war horse? Yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> it's, not a it's got music in it and they brought all the horses out. Yeah, but that's not a musical. It's got music. I didn't say it was a musical. I said, which play had a special adaptation? Oh, right. my bad. What are the wings? The wings are mm. the, um... Those sci things which birds <laughs> have! <laughs> I was thinking of sanitary pads. <laughs> <laughs> sanitary pads, the musical, <laughs> coming to the West End. Because they have wings, I do have wings, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so the wings are... <laughs> wing, wing. <laughs> I think Joey has the answer, maybe. <laughs> I don't think she does. I think she does, but I'm that facade of like laughter. Yeah, but your answer was great. I'm not wrong. <laughs> they are the bits that add to the side of the stage where you wait to come on. They are called the wings. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> wait, did you not know that? No, oh I know god. that. <laughs> Out of sight areas of the acting space. Actually, given the next question, it's not going to get much better. Oh no. Which musical was described by Vogue as the filthiest, most offensive, and surprise, sweetest thing you'll see on Broadway? The, the producers. <laughs> oh. The, the Book of Mormon? Correct, Book of Mormon. <laughs> Which oh. Willie Russell play starred Julie Walters in both its stage premiere and film adaptation? Our Day Out. No. Blood. 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 That's no. not a... No, it wasn't, was it? No. Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. No. Audience? Educating Rita. Educating Rita, yes. Oh, yes, of course. Not to be confused with Rita, Queen of Speed. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Did no one get that reference? Yes. Yes, Ocean Towers. Yeah, thank you. Where does the term in the limelight come from? Me. You, what, someone threw limes at you? <laughs> we know that Ed is an attention for let's move on. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not wrong. In Fuck the you. olden days, did, did they used to light the stage with limes? <laughs> was it like the lime wash? Like, like did you have a lime wash? They cut them in the limes. limes to make them see through. I don't know what I'm talking about now, but they're kind of green. If you hold them up in front of the light, it looks green. If you held them up in front of a 1,000 watt light, it would poof, gone. <laughs> <laughs> would you like some citrus? No. <laughs> <laughs> do, but you, do you mean those kind of like plastic things which go on top of lights? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Thinking chemistry lights. here. Chemistry. Oh, 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 oh I almost I'm failed out. chemistry, I'm out. Oh, yeah. God. I didn't Perhaps. fail, but I don't know anything about it. I'm <laughs> sorry if my chemistry tutor's watching. Oh, God. Our oh, audience knows. <laughs> it's the kind of spotlight which was called. Why are you sat over there for this episode? You're getting all the questions right. <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, the use of calcium oxides burned in hydrogen and oxygen to produce a bright white light that can be focused into a spotlight. The first spotlights were used by using literally limelight. Alan Akebourne wrote a play entitled Drowning on what? <laughs> Water. If it was QI, they'd be like, <laughs> going off right now with a dead obvious answer. 
Drowning on a canal boat. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm rowing it. I have How do you know. row a canal boat? That was impressive. Like Pepna. No, the, the about, rowboat. <laughs> canal boats weigh about 20 tons. The rowboat. <laughs> yes, to be fair, I have been in the boat where she is rowing it. We got back where we started. Eventually. Eventually. Drowning on what? My tears. Ice cream. That's me editing this show. <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. That sounds. That doesn't sound like a terrible way to die. Drowning on ice cream. What can you drown on? Um, Vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Gin. Speaking, speaking from experience here. Well, I'm not dead. It's, the bizarre thing about the way the foot plays phrased is it's drowning on, not drowning in. Yeah. So yeah. you're drowning on summer. So drowning on carpet. You're closer <laughs> with the answer. I'm a genius. Drowning on the floor. Yeah, closer. Drowning on the street. Drowning on the road. Drowning on the M6. Drowning. <laughs> 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 yeah, you probably drowned there. <laughs> drowning on the M6. I mean, we've not got nothing for that. Drowning on dry land is the answer. Oh, well. Ow. Oh, I prefer, I, I prefer drowning on the M6, actually. <laughs> you should write it. I haven't got. What makes you think I have time? <laughs> Beauty is bought by judgment of the eye is a quote from which Shakespeare play? Uh, beauty is bought by judgment of the eye. And, uh, Romeo and Juliet? That's no. your answer. What, anyone else? Beauty. <clears throat> I'm doing this because otherwise if I, if I let it just go and go and go, we just name every Shakespeare play. <laughs> I want to say question. much to do about nothing or love's labour's lost. Bang, second answer. Oh, nice, oh. love's labour's lost. Okay. What is a get-in? A get-in? Oh. It's, it's when you, like, you walk into, into a room. You put on the setup and you're like, like before tech, where you like yeah. sort everything out and you're like, okay, serious business time. But it's when you yeah. get your line right and you constantly get it wrong and then you're like, get it. It's <laughs> where all directors and stage managers go to cry and don't sleep for a week. Or I more. will accept that answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> very accurate. Where yeah. the set, lighting, sound, props, costume, and other parts of the show are set up in the Anyone who's not in the cast, essentially, and even then, if you're in the cast, it's still rough. Kate Beckinsale made her debut film appearance in an adaptation of which Shakespeare play? I don't know. Romeo and Juliet. Anyone else? Any more? Uh, Anyone else? Uh, uh, As you like say, it? I want to say Twelfth Night because there's a lot of women in it. Okay. Uh, would it have been uh, Taming of the Shrew? No, it's much to do about nothing. Okay. The version with Kenneth Branagh. She played Hero. Oh. Thank you, Brian. Seriously? <laughs> That's all the budget extends to? Yeah. I got two because I'm fat. I might have to get some more. Which 2005 re-adaptation includes allusions to Hitchcock films such as Rear Window and North by Northwest in its script? It's an old film, isn't it? Like a really old film. Elf. <laughs> yes, it? Elf the play. Is it 39 steps? Yes, it is. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Nice one. Why shouldn't you whistle in the wings? Because, um, in people can hear you. <laughs> it, <laughs> excuse me, I'm trying to speak. <laughs> in the, oh. <laughs> Ed, put a sock in it. <laughs> you should have been a, right, you should have been a sock, so put a sock in it. <laughs> oh. In the, now. <laughs> Yeah, go on. <laughs> no, in the olden days, it w they would communicate with whistles, and it usually meant that if you whistled, something could fly on stage and hit you. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, it's not an old theatrical superstition. It's just good health and safety because, of course, You're they used whistling on board the ships to communicate cool. with each other, and out-of-work sailors would work the fly system. In the 1970s, out-of-work actor Richard O'Brien wrote which highly successful musical? 1970s. Is it a musical that's still going today? Yeah, very much so. Les Mis. <laughs> it's not. You dress up for the occasion. You do. Rocky Horror Picture Show. The Rocky Horror Show, yes. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. The winner of this, this time is the audience. <laughs> God, Jill! <laughs> You win two tickets to a play about a man who makes sure people can't see him when he laughs at them. That's the opening night of Cackle and Hyde. 
That was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, it's time for music. Phoebe Jean has written a brand new musical called Where the Bees Fly and is about to perform a never before seen track from that musical. Take it away, Phoebe. Who are you? What can you see? If I am you, then you are me. Are you there? Are you a ghost? Can you even feel through the glasses moat? How is a reflection even real? You look like me, but I don't feel like we're the same. We never were. You're trapped and disappear when I turn. Have you ever wished you could be someone new? Are the questions and answers inside of you? What's your name? Do you have any friends? I wonder how your story ends. Who are you? I can't wait to see. Who are you? Could you be me? Do you have to question every single little thing? Will you help me ask the questions? I'm told I'm with answering. Can you sing? Do you like to dance? Has life even given you a chance? Are you alone? Are you afraid? Shiny and cold, you feel so strange. I wish I could just set you free. We're part of the same mystery. My questions kept left there untouched. I can't answer them with you still stuck. Have you ever wished you could escape from here? Smell new air and taste real fear. What is it like when I'm away? Am I the monster who comes out to play? Who are you? I've searched low and high. Who are you? Can you feel and cry? Do you have to question all of the important things? I can help you fight your battles if you just keep answering. Ah, you will face the future. We must fight before we run out of time. Because someone else wants to know answers to questions. Well done, Phoebe. Thank you very much for that. I know, yeah, I just did that just now. You ruined the whole illusion! What the fuck's wrong with you? And through the magic of editing, you will make that work. So tell us, what is the show about? The show is about a little girl called Lotta, who lives in 2080, and things are not looking so great, and she starts to learn about the early 21st century with her history teacher, Andor, and they time travel. They go to 2017 and they meet this punky activist called Hazel. And I'm not gonna say the whole plot, but they travel and they start to make things better. It's all about found family and unlikely friendships and saving the planet. So a global warming theme here? Yes, very much so. Fantastic. Um, it's all about the climate crisis. Exciting. When can we see it on the stage? So, I can't answer that, unfortunately, but what I will say is keep your eyes and ears peeled for dates across the UK coming soon. Exciting. Where can we find out more about it? Um, you can find out more over on our Instagram or our Facebook, and they're both just at where the bees fly. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that performance. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you guys very much for watching. It's goodbye from him. And I will be getting the inheritance of the chip man. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> goodbye from her. Goodbye. Goodbye from her. Bye. Goodbye from her. Ed's just got himself written out of the will. <laughs> <laughs> and it's goodbye from it. <laughs> that was the Lila choice to do at the start.